Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the history of humanity in the Quran. He tells us where we humans came from and how we came to be. And what was the point behind our existence? So he puts all of that in perspective. And he says before the creation, before the existence of humans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he had a conversation with the angels who were created far before human beings came into existence. Allah says to the angels, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says the meaning of these verses and remember when your Lord said to the angels, I will place on earth a Khalifa. The angels responded. They said, are you going to place on earth those that will bring about corruption and will shed blood? Allah says to them, I know what you do not know. That was the conversation that happened before the creation of mankind. Even Allah created Adam. Allah created Adam and brought him into existence. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to demonstrate to the angels his wisdom behind creating Adam and a completely different creation than the angels. Because what the angels do is that they are obedient. They don't have a mind of their own to come up with stuff or make choices. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the angels, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. The angels only do what they are commanded. They never disobey Allah, and that clearly indicates that the angels don't have a mind of their own. They don't have an intention of their own. Allah inspires them with something; they just do it. Allah commands them with something; they act it out. That's how the angels work, and that's how they live. And you will never find like an angel having a thought, entertaining a thought and say, okay, that's a good idea. Let me just do that. They don't, they don't function that way. They don't have this capacity. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and humanity to give them something different than the angels. So they are a different creation and they demonstrate the power and the capacity of Allah to create, create a variety, create something different. Create, create something that will change even the dynamics of how life goes on. So Allah created Adam and that's why when he said Khalifa and the scholars of Tafsir indicate that Khalifa shows and, and demonstrate choice, that humans are able to make choices. As humans, you can sit down and think of something and an idea pops up in your mind and you say, perfect, let me just do that. That sounds like, sounds like a good idea. Angels don't do that. But Allah gave humans that capacity. And Allah also gives humans the capacity that is just an extension, an offshoot of that. The power to make choices. You have two options. You can decide and make your mind up which one to choose and which one to act upon. And that's why the angels, because they don't know what humans are. When Allah said, I'm going to place on earth a Khalifa, the angels straight away respond and they said, are you going to place on earth those who will create corruption and shed blood. How did they know that? How did they know that? They knew it from the word Khalifa because they know everything can be set right by following the commands of Allah. And that's what the angels do. That's what the sun does. That's what the moon does. That's what the trees and the the wind and, and, and everything in creation, that's what they do. They just do what Allah commands them. They don't have a mind of their own. But Allah says, I'm going to make a creation, place on earth a creation that will be able to make choices. And it it has a mind of its own. It can can come up with ideas, with capacities your angels cannot improvise. That's a capacity of humans that angels and other creation don't have. You can improvise. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَّمْ afterwards, وَعَلَّمْ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ قَالُوا لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the names, the names of everything. And the scholars have differed with regards to what specifically that means. Is it the specific names of things like a horse, sky, earth, a tree? Just give them the names and the labels. Some scholars said that, but some other scholars said, no, it's the capacity to create names for things, to be able to label things and to be able to be introduced to new things and figure them out on your own. And that's what humans do. And that's why when Allah sent them down to earth, they had to learn how life on earth works out. They have the capacity now to learn new things, to improvise, to come up with new ideas, to create inventions and make discoveries. That's part of the special thing about humans. That's why they are Khalifa. The angels cannot do that. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he taught Adam this capacity, he said to the angels, name these things. Angels could not name things because they couldn't come up with labels. They can only deal with what they have been taught. They don't have this capacity for improvisation to learn on their own. So when Allah said, name these things, they said, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. They said, we only know what you have taught us. We cannot, if you haven't taught us these names, we couldn't name them. We don't know what these things are. And we don't have the capacity to come up with names and labels and try to figure them out on our own. Then Allah said to Adam alayhi salam, He said, Qala ya Adam anbi'hum bi asma'ihim. He said, Adam told them about the names of these things. Adam displayed that capacity. And that's why Allah SWT said to, to the angels, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَأَعْلَمُ مَا تُبْدُونَ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ Allah said to the angels when Adam was showed that capacity to name these things and label them and figure them out. Allah said to the angels, didn't I tell you that I know everything in the heavens and the earth and I know what you reveal and what you conceal. I know that because Allah is responding to the first statement when they said, are you going to create a creation that will bring about corruption and shed blood? Allah demonstrated the answer to them by showing that capacity of Adam. Yes, that capacity might mean corruption and bloodshed, but it also means something else that there is a creation that will worship Allah on their own by their own choice. Not because they are inspired. Angels cannot disbelieve. They don't have that capacity. They don't have that capacity. They can only worship Allah. They can only obey Allah. They can't even think of a sin. They can't entertain the thought of a sin. They can't do that. So Allah wanted to create a creation that is able on its own to decide to worship Allah. Proactively choose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against all the odds. Against all this, the complexity of this machine that is the mind that can come up with ideas, strange ideas. And there's no shortage of ideas throughout the human history. Look at the philosophies. Look at the ideologies that have been created. In every direction you find people coming up with ideas. Some of them are reasonable, some of them are strange and, and weird and, and completely off. Humans are able to come up with ideas. But the challenge for humans will be responsibility. Angels just worship Allah. They have no choice. So for them, there is no paradise or hellfire they don't have choice there's no punishment for them and there is no reward in the sense of paradise for them but Allah created humans and he gave them something more than he gave to the angels you can choose you can choose what to do you can come up with ideas are you going to follow the guidance of Allah or are you going to choose something else choose that's a luxury that's a right the angels were not given. That's a privilege other creatures were not given. But it comes with the other side of the coin, responsibility. We gave you that luxury, that right, that entitlement to my choices. And rights and privileges come 
with responsibility and accountability, how are you going to use it? You use it right, you get more privilege, you get reward in paradise. You abuse it at your own risk. At your own risk. Because if you abuse that and you will be given the time to abuse it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa umli lahum, and I will give them space and time. You will abuse that, but Allah will give you time. He will not take you out straight away. But if you do that, what will happen? You'll be doomed. You'll be punished. And it could be eternal. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places us in this world. And by the way, the story unfolds in that exact way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He enters Adam into, into Jannah after giving him his wife. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam rights now. Rights. What are the rights? You enter Jannah with everything in Jannah. And you eat from whatever you want. You can do whatever you want now. Whatever you, you wish for, whatever you like, you go and approach it and you take it. And it's yours. But that's a lot of right. That's a lot of good things. That's a lot of choice. And it has to come with the other side. And that's what? Responsibility. And that's why Allah placed on Adam a responsibility and do not come near that tree. Because without obligations and without responsibilities and without restrictions, rights will lead to corruption. Luxuries will lead to corruption. You give someone more power without responsibility, they will ruin themselves and destroy others. They have to go hand in hand. So Allah put Adam in paradise and because he gave him so much right, he had to give, he also gave him the other side of the coin and that was responsibility. It's not about the tree, by the way. It's not about the tree, it's about how I gave you all of that luxury and I gave you the choice. And you have to take the other side of the coin and that's how are you going to use that choice. So to test you, I'm going to say don't eat from that tree, don't come near that tree. And that was the point behind the tree. And what did Adam do? He listened to the whispers of shaitan and thus he abused the power of choice. He abused the power of choice and he, was, he used his capacity for improvisation to figure out new things by listening to shaitan. Because shaitan said, if you eat from that tree, you're going to get a huge kingdom and dominion and power and you will become eternal. Adam could, in, could, could picture that and that's the capacity. So he used the rights that Allah gave him wrongly. In the punishment. So Allah took him out of paradise. And somebody might say, Adam shouldn't have, shouldn't have made that mistake. If hadn't, hadn't he done that mistake, we would be in, in paradise now. No, don't blame Adam because we all do the same on a daily basis. We all do that. Don't play righteous. Don't play righteous. We are just a reflection of Adam alayhi salam. We do that every day. The moment we wake up, we make the wrong choices. In our private life, in our relationships at home, outside, we do a lot of that. In our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we just make the wrong choices day in and day out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that balance. So when Allah now put Adam down, He said, okay, since you did not hold that responsibility, up to the level of the rights we gave you, we're gonna take some of these rights away from you. So that your level of responsibility matches your level of rights. That's the only way to live, by the way. So Allah says, so your level of responsibility is not so high because you ate from the tree, you abused the power of choice. Now we're gonna then take down the rights that we gave you so that it matches the level of responsibility you displayed. And that's why Allah put him down on earth. Why? There's less choice. And in paradise, you wish for something, you get it. That's the luxury and the rights. You're entitled to that. But on earth, you want to get, you want to eat something, you have to go and hunt it. You have to grow it. You have to cook it. You have to work towards it. So you put responsibility and as much responsibility and work you put, you get rights. And that's the only way life could function. You want to ruin someone's life, by the way? Just 
mess with this ratio and this balance. How do we do that, kids? Let's make it, take it down to the level of our daily life. Kids, give your kids rights without responsibilities and you spoil them. You ruin them and maybe for life. They don't, they don't, they don't understand because you take them away from the dynamics of life. You give them a lot, you spoil them a lot, you shelter them from life. And they don't, do, they, don't, they, don't, they don't get to learn how life works. So when they grow up, they're spoiled. They, don't, they, they think they are entitled. They start to ask for more without having a sense of responsibility and contribution and giving. They always want to receive, but they don't, they don't want to give. So they will, they will suffer in life. And when they get married, they don't realize that in a relationship like this, you need to match the balance, obligations and rights. You need to give that person their right so that you get your rights. And these are your responsibility. That's how things work. And you will find in Islam, any level of rights, freedom that you get, it comes with, a more, with more responsibility. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave man more rights in the family that he makes more decisions. He's the leading figure in the family. And this is why Allah says, And men have a level of responsibility above them. It's a level of responsibility, but also more capacity, more power. It's not about this kind of, it's not about in lack of equality. It's about how to make things function because you need to maintain that balance. So with our kids, don't take away from them the gift of responsibility. You give them more rights, give them more freedom, make them more accountable. You give them more pocket money, make them more accountable. So that you teach them how life works, because you need that balance. And you don't spoil them. And on the other hand, you can't take away their freedoms and give them more responsibility. So you turn them into slaves. You can't do that to your children. You can't do that to your wife, or a wife cannot do that to her husband. You cannot do that to anyone. When you give more obligations on a person than the rights they have, you have broken that balance and it's not going to work. The consequences will be devastating. So if you look at the whole of Islam, it's all about that striking that balance. If as a person you want to grow, Look at the responsibility you are willing to shoulder. You're willing to take care of. And by the way, it works both ways. If you want more rights as a human being, put in more responsibility and more commitment. And you will see that this, the circle of your rights will start expanding. And that's something for us as a Muslim community, by the way. We can play the leftist game and just say rights, 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 rights. But we're not really contributing. We're not really taking social responsibility. It's not going to work. It will backfire. It will alienate us further. It will give us a bad name. It will create enemies for the Muslim community. And the right way to ask for more rights is to shoulder more responsibility and show more commitment. When you show more commitment, you're going to get more and more responsibility, you're going to get more rights. That's how humans work, by the way. And that's why when you see someone working hard, you say that man is committed. So let's give him more rights. Let's give him more capacity, more power. That's how the, how, that's how the world works, by the way. And that's how trust is being built. So we need to maintain that balance. And that's really, again, that's how Islam is built. And that's why in Islam, for example, if you don't have choice in a certain situation, you're forced to do something, accountability is lifted. If you are forced to do something that is haram, Allah does not hold you accountable. Because you don't have the right to choose here in this situation. So accountability, because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala built, you know, this earth. And how, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even uh, made Islam based on these and if we want everything to go right in our relationships if you want more rights in the house show more responsibility wife in the house you want more rights you can't just claim it sometimes people really like have this very surface 
naive understanding about Islam, they like they approach a friend or a, or a counselor or an imam, they say, I want to bring my husband to you so you show him my rights. Our husband says, I want to bring my wife and you tell her what my rights are, what her obligations are. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Real life works differently when you really fulfill your responsibility and you act as a man as a husband and a woman as a wife and you're responsible for the family, you shoulder more responsibility, then automatically you get more rights. Automatically. And people cannot go against, it's, it's very rare occasions when people go against that, by the way. Because you empower yourself with responsibility. The reason why I choose responsibility rather than obligations is as obligations means it, it sort of indicates you don't have a choice. I have to, because I'm obligated. But that's not the case. Yes, you have to pray in Islam, but if you just pray because you have to, you're not going to get much out of the prayer. But if you say it's my responsibility, that means you want to do it. Yes, it's obligatory, but you want to do it. And when you pray this way, the prayer transforms you. You experience it fully. Same thing, if you're a husband and you want your rights, okay, just be there really as a man. Shoulder your responsibility and you see the rights will start flowing to you. Unless you're married to, to a psychopath. The same applies on the other side. With your kids, don't take away as they grow older, you need to give them more rights, more freedom, more choice, more, more space. But that comes with what? Responsibility and accountability. So you help them grow. And you can't take away their rights from them and place obligations upon them more than they can shoulder or more than the rights you have, in, you have given them. You have to maintain that balance. And by the way, that's a way of life. Look at everything in life just like that. Just like that. And in Islam, you shoulder more, res more responsibility, you do more, and, and you believe more in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you learn more about Islam, and you start acting more on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, Allah is going to give you more. Allah will give you more Iman, which is a right, which is a luxury. And Allah will give you more faith, Allah will give you more insight, then Allah will give you more in paradise. And automatically you'll find that you have more influence on other people, religiously speaking. It's one of the laws of this world. We live in a world that is very polarized today. And people have a lot of slogans and that they shout out and they sort of try to show, make a show of them everywhere. And there's a lot of talk about rights, 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 rights. But there is no emphasis on responsibility commitment and obligations and without that balance even your demand of rights will not be good for you whether we speaking politically socially or even individually as an individual so you want to claim more rights you have to put in more responsibility that's how it works and that's that that's the only way forward that's the only way forward even religiously the same thing. So Allah, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever, whenever He places an obligation, He will give you more freedom, will give you more resources and more choices. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more freedom, He expects more from you. He expects more from you. So, and specifically here more to the younger ones, do not be fooled by a lot of those ideologies around that sort of give you a very deficient and single-handed understanding of the world and how it works ask for your rights ask for your rights but it's not it never talks about your obligations because that will ruin society by the way that ruins countries when people abuse their rights and they got more rights than that than the responsibility they were willing to contribute nations start to falter and they start to decline and when you do the opposite and place more obligations on people than the rights and the space that you have given them, you start creating slavery. The imbalance will be there and slowly, slowly it will eat at the heart of that society. So you will find this principle, as I said, it runs through the Quran, by the way. It's very clear here in the story of Adam and it shows that that's the test of life.
That's why Allah placed us on earth, so we know how to choose. Allah gave us that power, that luxury, that right of choice, and, and improvisation, we can come up with ideas, but that places a lot of responsibility on us. And it's not a bad thing. Responsibility is beautiful. It's the only way we can feel our lives are meaningful. Because if you just try to savor everything and get rights, rights without you contributing, you will feel empty. You will feel that you have no zero value as an individual. So that kind of system, Allah also built it in us. So we cannot run away from it. And if we do that, we will be bringing about destruction upon ourselves and upon others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to a clear understanding of his book and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask him to guide us to strike a balance between rights and responsibilities and in a way that pleases him the most. Allahumma khfil al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat.